I'm going to go over my film camera collection. Um, I get a lot of people asking me what I shoot with and questions about all the cameras that I owned and I kind of want to not go into like super detail about it but I kind of want to just like show you what I have and show you what I'm shooting with currently. Um, so yeah, here it is. This is my Olympus stylus. Recently it's been my go-to point shoot camera mainly for the fact that it's super small, it's no bigger than your hand, and it fits right to your pocket. It has a 35mm f3.5 lens. It's very sharp. I usually call these point shoots my memory cameras because I use them for capturing moments and not necessarily use them for art pieces. The Ricoh FF3 Super. I got this a while back for $20 at a local thrift shop. It's a 35mm 3.2 point shoot camera. I usually keep this in my car just in case I don't have a camera on me, but I know that this is always there and in the glove box and yeah. The Olympus XA and XA2. These are both rangefinder point shoot cameras. I prefer the XA over the XA2, mostly for the fact that it has a 2.8 lens when the XA2 has a 3.5 lens. Also, you have several aperture functions with the XA, when with the XA2 you have house, people, and other people. <laughs> the Canon SureShot Max Date. I picked this one up on eBay for about 10 bucks. It's a very cheap camera. I only bought it so I can take it places I normally wouldn't take a camera. It has a 38mm f3.5 lens. It's decently sharp for how cheap this camera is. It also allows you to add the date to your photos in the back. I refer to it as my beater camera because I really don't care if it gets broken or damaged. I can always just get another one. The Rolly 35. This is a super neat 35mm camera. It's super compact. Even the lens collapses inside. It still remains one of the smallest 35mm cameras out there. The legendary Nishika N8000. This is a super fun camera. It looks super complex when it really isn't. Um, this was built in the 80s. It has super cheap plastic. It has all these features that you think do something when they don't. It has this nice LCD screen that is actually just a sticker and does nothing at all. It also only has three settings. Sunny, partly cloudy, and house. They're a really great camera to own and I suggest picking one up, but the only problem is that due to popularity, the price has risen a lot in the last three years. This should be a $20 to $30 camera and now it's a $300 camera. The Nikon F3. It's a super popular camera. This is actually the first camera that Nikon started putting the red lines on their cameras. Um, another thing I also like about it is you have the removable viewfinder. The Nikon FG20. This is the camera that started it all for me. I picked this up about 15 years ago at a local Goodwill. I just really liked the way that it looked. I knew nothing about cameras at all and this is the one that started everything for me. The Canon Canonet QL17 G3. One thing I use this camera for is street photography. It has the 40 millimeter f1.7 lens on it. It's super sharp and it's great for carrying around. The main problem I have with these is the light seal tends to wear out over time. So when I picked this up, the light seals were totally gone. I picked up a light seal kit, it's good as new. The Nikon S 4A. This is a completely waterproof camera. It was built back in like the 80s or 90s, made specifically for scuba divers. It has a maximum depth of about 160 feet. The Nikon Nikkor 55mm 2.5 lens on it. Olympus OM-1. This one is currently my go-to SLR camera. 
just for the fact that it's like it's super small it's way smaller than any of the other SLRs that I have I personally love it because I have several lenses that I can use with it unlike all my other ones where I just have a prime lens the Canon A1 it has the programmed auto exposure mode with 50 millimeter 1.8 lens on it. The Bronica S2. This is a 6x6 medium format camera that I own. I don't use this one as much as I'd like to. It's the only one I have that kind of looks like a ass butt. This is my first medium format camera. It's the Yashica C. It's a twin lens reflex camera, which means the top lens is for the viewfinder. The second lens is for taking the actual photo. Next, the Yashica Mat 124G. It's very similar to the Yashica C. The only difference really is it has a built-in light meter. I also owned a Yashica Mat 124 without the G. The only difference really is that they have like the gold plating and this is also all black when the Yashica Mat 124 is just, it's black and has more silver. But The Mamiya C33 Professional. I use this camera mostly for taking portraits. Um, it has the bellows, which allow you to get super close to your subject, which with most TLR cameras you can't do. The Fuji. GS645S. This is a rangefinder medium format camera. I personally love it because it's super lightweight and I take it to do street photography for that reason. It also has this crowbar here to protect the lens because it was made pretty shitty. So it's very delicate and without this crowbar here the lens will just easily snap off. One of the main things that breaks is the lens breaks or the shutter goes. So those are two things that you really run into with this camera. Um, but so far I haven't had too many issues with it. Mia 645-1000S. I like this one because I have several interchangeable lenses for this. This one has the, the waist level finder. You can also get the eye level viewfinder for it as well. Last but not least, The Beast by Pentax 6x7. Ever since I got into film photography, it's always been my goal of mine to acquire one of these, and I finally have it. This is probably my favorite film camera of all time. I love the giant 6x7 format. I love the super sharp lens that it has. I love this wooden handle that is only good for lugging around. <laughs> 105 2.4 lens, which is probably the main lens that everyone uses to shoot with this camera. Anyway, there you have it. That's my film camera collection as of today. Hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.